Hi everyone! In this video I want to show you how many types of brushes you can find in an art shop. There are so many types and there are so many brands out there that you can be a bit confused when it comes to choosing your perfect brush that perfectly suits your watercolor style and illustration. So in this video I want to show you my best brushes and uh, I want to help you to find your uh, own brush and um, your own uh, unique tool to do the best illustration you ever done. But before we get into this video, please make sure that you have subscribed to my YouTube channel and that you've clicked on that ring bell button so you can be notified whenever I'm posting a new video. And if you want to know how to choose your best tool ever, then keep on watching. The very first and most important thing to learn is to distinguish the synthetic brushes from the animal or natural brushes. And how to do that? Well, when you go in an art store, you're going to notice that some brushes are much more expensive than other brushes. And this means that they are more likely to be natural or animal brushes. And this is one thing. But now I'm going to test them and I'm going to show you the difference between, between natural or animal brushes and synthetic brushes. Another thing that I want you to notice before we start is the hair shape of the brushes. So if I take this brush and this one, you'll notice a difference in terms of shape. This is a synthetic brush and this is a natural brush. But when you go in the store, you'll find the brush with this kind of shape. It's really pointed, it's not like that. So when you buy the brush and use it and then you wash it and it will become dry at some moment, um, it will become like that. But now if I wet it with some water, you'll see that it will become pointed. So this is another difference, another thing that you'll notice um, between synthetic and natural brushes. Now I'm going to choose three brushes for each type of hair. And here I have different brands. There are brushes from Tintoretto, Borciani Bonazzi, Da Vinci, Escoda, Cotman, Winsor Newton, Raphael. But you don't have to look at the brand. I want to talk about brushes only. I'm not sponsoring any brand. And for the synthetic side, I'll choose these brushes. So I have Escoda, Da Vinci and Cotman, Winsor Newton. They have three different shapes as you can see, and also three different sizes. And uh, for the natural hair side, I'll choose uh, Borcioni Bonazzi, then Da Vinci and another Da Vinci, because they have different sizes. But um, regarding the natural hair, you're, you're going to notice that the shape will be the same. Even if you take this brush here from Da Vinci, it will have the same shape as another brand, so the brand doesn't matter. On this side I'm going to test the synthetic brushes, while on the other side I'm going to test the natural hair brushes. And the first thing we're going to see together is which of these kind of brushes can do thinner lines. I'm going to start with this higher size and I take some color and do some lines. As you can see, the hair is really pointed and we can do very thin lines. But also we have this kind of stroke. So this is a really good brand for brushes, I can think. So let's test the second one. This is from Da Vinci, Synthetic Nova. As you can see, the hair is not really pointed. And now we go with the Cotman one, number three. Yes, this uh, hair is not as pointed as this one. As you can see here, but you still can do very thin lines with this one. But 
this one is not so good. I think it's also a bit ruined um, because synthetic brushes can't can't last a long as long as natural brushes, and this is one of those kind of things that you have to consider before uh, buying a brush. Now we're going to see if these brushes have the ability to hold a good amount of paint or water and at the same time to maintain a fine point and also uh, the ability to distribute the paint smoothly on the paper. So we can see if they have this ability and um, if it's good enough. So I'll start with this brush as I did before. So now the color inside the brush has finished and uh, yes, it, uh, it's this kind of surface um, you're going to paint with this brush. You're not going to paint more than this with this kind of brush because this is the capacity of paint and water that this brush can hold. Now I test the second one. I do the same thing. I take a good amount of color yes this is pretty much and um, he and it also did a great job i think because it's nearly the same it's, it's a smaller size than than the first one and it also did his job now i go with the smaller one Obviously the smaller one is used for details, so you can't paint bigger surfaces than this and um, you buy this kind of brush only for doing details and not for paint painting um, a whole page. Uh, and this is, yes, this is normal and uh, it's also, I think it's a good brush because it can do fine lines and it also can uh, be used to paint, uh, I don't know, I think a uh, small face, a uh, small uh, flower, and something like that, but you can use it to, I don't know, paint a whole sky or um, a river, and uh, yes, uh, it's doing its job, I think. Now we'll test these uh, natural hair brushes, and uh, we'll see the difference between the two kinds of brushes. I have to tell you something about this kind of natural hair brushes. So the best brushes for watercolors are those made of sable hair, which comes from the tail of a species of Martin, which lives in the North Asia. But the very best sable hair is uh, the one that comes from the tail of a species of weasel, which uh, lives in the Siberian region called Kolinsky. And these kind of brushes are called Kolinsky, as you can see on them and they can live forever because they have a great ability to maintain their shape and their fine point. But let's start doing some fine lines with these brushes and I start with the bigger one as I did before. As you can see it has a really pointed hair. And yes, it doesn't do um, as uh, thinner lines as a synthetic brush, this one from Escoda, because it's also bigger than the Escoda one. And let's try the medium size. Yes, the medium size, it's really similar to the synthetic one because it's really pointed and it does the same kind of lines. And now the smaller one. As you can see, there isn't a really difference between the medium and the smaller one because they have the same 
pointed here and they do similar lines and you can use this one to do uh, both details and painting. Let's test now their ability to maintain paint and then to distribute it on the paper. I start with the bigger one. As you can see, I can go on forever. I can stop. I have to stop because the page is finished. By, but as you can see, there's a huge difference between these two kind of distribution and, and the ability to maintain water and paint. And let's do the same thing with the medium size. And even this size, it's amazing. So it can, you can paint forever with this kind of brushes. Uh, even though it's a smaller one, so it's not as big as this one. As you can see, you can paint a lot. And this is a big difference. The biggest difference between synthetic brushes and natural hair brushes. They have this amazing ability to spread color on the, paint, on the paper and in a way that it's it's amazing, a really smooth way and uh, I don't know, I don't have enough words to, to say how great these kind of brushes can work for watercolors. And in the end, let's test the smaller size. So guys, there is a difference between these two brushes. They have really similar sizes and they do different jobs as you can see here. There's a really amazing job with the natural hair brushes. So it's it worth the cost and I know they are more expensive but at the same time they last forever and you can do amazing jobs as you can see here. Now I want to test this brush from Ultimo series of Escoda and I want to do it not because of the brand but because I want to show you how it performs and it performs really similar to the natural hair brushes and it also has this softness in here and I think it's a really good alternative and I'll show you why. So I wet it first of all and I want to show you the pointed hair. As you can see, it has some pointed hair in here and now I test it. I'll do some lines for the beginning. And you're also going to do some strokes like this. So it has a good point and it can do good lines. It's really similar to the natural hair brushes. And now let's do, uh, let's test uh, the ability to absorb water and paint and then to distribute it on the paper. Yes, guys, I think this is a really good alternative to the natural hair brushes and yes it's not the same thing but it's really similar and you should think about this you should consider it before buying a brush but let's talk now about another difference that you can notice among brushes and that is the shape of the brush and it's really important to choose the best shape for your technique for watercolors i suggest you to buy the round brushes like this one because they have this full body hair and also really pointed really pointed bristles so you can do lines you can do small details you can paint larger areas and they are very versatile they are the most versatile brushes for watercolors while the flat brushes i use them um, only for acrylics because yes you can do some different effects on uh, with watercolors but they are not the same thing as the round brushes and i'll show you that so with a round brush you can paint in different ways with watercolors and i show you right now 
So you can do some lines, different kind of lines. And you can also do some strokes like this. And you can paint larger areas. You can do a lot of things with this kind of brush, with one brush, but with flat brush, like this one. You can do some effects, I think, like this one. Or, yes, you can do some lines like here, but, or like that. And you can paint in this way. But it's not the same thing because watercolors are not like acrylics. They are more dil diluted and the paper is a really delicate paper. Is, you can't do some things on the watercolor paper, on the cotton paper, and you can do other things on other kind of papers with other kind of techniques or mediums. So I suggest you to buy round brushes for watercolors because you'll do a big deal buying round brushes and you'll invest some money there. <laughs> you won't buy this brush as your unique brush for watercolors. Then you'll also find the wash brushes and I think they call them in this way because you can wash the paper. So I use them a lot to wet the paper before doing a wet on wet technique. So I do this kind of movement and I also use them to do some wider shading because they have this wider bristles and yes, you can have only one of these. You don't need to have two or three because one is more than you need and then I have here other kind of brushes like this one and here in Italy we call it French brush because of this kind of seal and this kind of hair and this is a synthetic brushes and I use it a lot to paint larger areas as I said before for the wash brushes and yes this is an angle brush and I think I never use it <laughs> Then um, this is a small round brush and I use it a lot because um, you can uh, have an extra control when you paint with this one. And yes, you can, you can shade, do some shadings or you can blend the colors or you can um, use it to take off uh, um, the extra water you will have in some points of the paper. And yes, you can do a lot of things with this small brush and you also need only one size of this kind of brush and yes i have even this one this was is, this one is a flat brush but also with the round hair it's like a foundation brush i can say yes there are different kind of brushes but i think the most important brush you have to have in your set is the round brush in different sizes but the round brush is the most important thing for the watercolors there is also another type of brushes and they are called travel brushes because you want to have them uh, during your traveling or when you are outside the house. And this in particular is the most popular one because it has this bottle for the water and it works as an humidifier for the hair. As you can see, the hair is really wet and um, it's like a pencil. You put it in your bag and you can travel around the world and yes. It's amazing. Then there is also this kind of brush. This is from Escoda from the series Perla and uh, you can close it in this way. And you can prevent the hair uh, damage. But at the same time here you don't have the bottle for the water and you have to have with you a cup of water in order to wet the, the hair and to paint. So this is the kind of brush that I suggest you to buy when you, you know that you're going to travel and you want to paint during your traveling. So guys, these are my brushes and what I had to tell you about brushes, I hope this will be useful and that you're going to invest your money on the best brushes and on the right brushes for you. If you have other questions about this subject, please ask me in the comments below and I'll answer to you immediately. Then. Um, 
I hope you've already subscribed to my YouTube channel. If not, please do it because in this way you're going to support my art and my channel. And thank you a lot for watching this long video. Uh, we're going to see each other in the other videos about illustrations and watercolors. So please stay tuned. Bye.